Welcome to the Job and Graduate School Search presentation presented by the University of Arkansas Career Development Center. Today we are going to go through several basic areas that will lay the foundation for understanding the Job and Graduate School Search process. For a more detailed approach, you can make an appointment with one of the Career Development Center counselors to discuss any concerns, in-depth questions, or difficulties. I will give you more information on how to make an appointment at the end of this presentation. To begin, we will first focus on the job search. The job search process requires a lot more than just crossing your fingers and hoping you land your dream job. It is important to have a plan and a timeline to keep you on track. Throughout this presentation, I will be discussing with you how to put together a plan, what your next steps should be, and how you can best approach the job search process in general. We will be doing this with four steps. Number one is research. Number two is the actual job search process. Three is networking, which is a very important step that we'll focus on a little bit more later. And last but not least, the actual application and follow-up. Now, when we talk about research, we need to know where we're going. So there are questions that we can ask yourself, that we can ask ourselves as you begin your job search. For starters, what skills and experience do I have? That may come down to several questions, including what skills has my degree and experience given me? What am I proud of? How have people relied upon me in the past? And what can I contribute? Then there are other questions that are more focused on yourself and what you're hoping for. So for example, what do I want from a job? What do I enjoy doing? How much responsibility do I want? And what are my time commitments? Lastly, what are opportunities that are actually available? That may come down to geography, it may come down to industry, and even possibly being able to create your own job. A resource we have on the Career Development Center webpage is a what can I do with this major? Um, we have broken down the majors on the University of Arkansas's campus by college. Almost all majors are reflected there, so you can go through and see all of your different options. Once you find your major and click on it, then you can see that we have several links that will give you different information about the major. It will give you background on the actual degree, some related careers, skills, links to look for jobs and internships, career planning, and professional association. The web page gives you a lot of resources within a specific major, so you can explore many of the different options that you have. Overall, what you're really hoping for is to find out what you want to accomplish. Now, you also want to research your employers and build a list of target companies in your industry. And with that, you want to consider things like location. Maybe it's important to you to be in a specific area, or maybe because of your industry, you'll be focused in a specific geographic area. Also consider your skills, any possible connections you may have in the industry, and then the potential you have to advance. While small companies offer the chance to be involved in lots of areas, but there may be fewer opportunities to advance than in a larger company. However, in a larger company, you may be in a specific area where you don't get to experience working in other divisions of the company. I also want to look at an interest you may have in their products or services, and then of course, any training programs that may be beneficial for you in the future. As far as where you should be looking, there are several areas. Some of them are even on the University of Arkansas campus. For example, in the Career Development Center, we offer career fairs and events. If you go to our website, you can view our upcoming events and also see what companies and employers are coming to the fair. It will give you information on majors they are recruiting for, positions, and if they are interested in talking to international students. In addition to the career fairs and events on campus, there are also alumni networking events that are put on by the alumni office. If you're a member of a professional RSO, there are professional association meetings that you can attend, and also there are often employer information sessions put on, put on. Oftentimes, the Career Development Center will bring employers to campus, but sometimes it's through a department or college. But as far as where you should be looking online, there are a few websites I want to point out. Two of the largest search boards are Indeed.com and SimplyHired.com. You can spend a lot of time searching many different job boards, but Simply Hired and Indeed are two websites that bring a lot of those together. We recommend using the advanced job search. Let's say you're interested in a public relations position, but you do not want to be a copywriter, and you'd like to work within the Northwest Arkansas area. So here, it brought up 62 different jobs that you could look into. But let's say you're not interested in working in Fayetteville and you would prefer to go back home to, let's say, Dallas. You can easily change the location 
And then there's almost 1,200 jobs with public relations that do not mention the words copywriter in Dallas, Texas. So, and then you can further break it down by salary, job type, and even specific location. I can also break it down by experience level. So I might look at the entry level positions because as a current or recent graduate, those may be more applicable. So there's 609 entry level positions in Dallas. Having said that though, you could also look at the um, senior level positions. Because let's say that you want to be a senior director at some point in the public relations field. You can go through, through and see what the qualifications are. So if this job is something that you want in 10 years, you can find out more about um, what you need to be doing now and over the next few years to prepare for this kind of position. This is a great resource to find jobs, particularly if you aren't sure where to start or are trying to get ideas about job titles. Indeed and Simply Hired are a great resource for those sorts of things. We also have job search links on our website. These are broken down by different areas. Depending on what you're interested in, you can find links that will take you to the jobs board specific to that area. For example, if you're interested in freelance or government work, this is a great place to start. One of the biggest job boards for University of Arkansas students is Handshake. Employers interested in University of Arkansas students can post directly to this board. I'll show you the board now. Um, this is very similar to what it would look like for you. It'll be a little more tailored to yourself. And then across the top, you can select jobs. And it'll pull up all the jobs that have been posted on here. Now, you can filter it further. For example, if we type in public relations, like we did on Ondeed, it'll bring it down to 224 matching jobs. And you can further filter it by location, job type, employment type, and much, much more. The last job board I want to mention is Going Global. This is a great website if you're a domestic student who is looking to work abroad or if you're an international student who is looking to stay in the United States for a while. If you're wanting to work outside of the U.S., they have country career guides, which will give you information on what a resume might look like in that specific country. What are, and will also give you some of the specific job boards and some information on things you need to know about applying for jobs and interviewing in that country. If you're an international student looking to stay in the U.S., they also have H-1B visa information and employer petitions. So if you search by state, um, it will tell you the companies that have positioned for the most visas for their employees, so the companies that are willing to sponsor. This is a way that you can target your search um, by employers who have sponsored in the past. So now on to the networking piece of the process. So what is networking? A lot of times we think of networking as just having connections, but it's more than that. It's keeping those connections up. It's the long-term relationship. If it's a relationship you have kept up by checking in every three or four months, they will know a little bit more about you and may be more inclined to help you. They may not only be more likely to help you, they may be more likely to think of you. So why is that important? Over half of all jobs are never posted, and that's because sometimes they know they will get more applications than they're willing to read through, and sometimes they aren't exactly sure what they need but are willing to create something for someone they know will do, the, do good work. So where can you network? We've talked about career fairs and events. It is one of the last places you can actually have a face-to-face -face conversation with a recruiter. We also have many employers who will stay on campus the day after and do interviews. So if there are any students they have had good conversations with at the fairs, they, Im they invite those students to come back the very next day for interviews for internships or full-time positions. Family and friends are another great resource. Just because they're not in your specific industry doesn't mean they don't know people in the industry. And it's the same for friends' parents or parents' friends. You may have a friend and an RSO whose parents works in the field you are considering. And then definitely don't forget about current or former employers or supervisors. They have, may have some people that they have connections to the field, even if it's not the one they work in, or at least be able to point you in the right direction. Another great resource is RSOs on campus. Clubs and organizations a lot of times, especially pre-professional organizations, these are people who may be interested in the same sorts of things that you are. So they may have connections or they may know of opportunities just because they are considering the same field. Volunteer and community organizations are another way to start making a name for yourself. People are more likely to take a chance on someone they know. So if you've been working part-time as a volunteer organization for the last three or four months, 
you're more likely to get a job in that organization or at the very least have a great reference. Then we have social media. Facebook and Twitter are both important in the job search. Facebook in particular has a friends of friends search where instead of just searching for a person's name and trying to find their Facebook profile, you can say friends of friends who work for Walmart. And it will tell you your friend Josh is friends with Emily who works at Walmart. So then you can ask Josh to introduce you or use Josh's name when you contact Emily. However, you should always ask permission before using someone's name. Twitter is also important. You can be following industry leaders, and there are some companies, for example Microsoft, who have specific Twitter feeds just for recruiting. Instagram is starting to be used in the same way where companies have their own Instagram feeds for jobs. For example, Hallmark has their own Hallmark's jobs page. Now, LinkedIn is the biggest way to network on social media. We won't get into your profile in this presentation, but the Career Development Center can help you create one. LinkedIn offers a networking tool that I will show you here. If you type in the University of Arkansas, the school, it will pull up the school's page and tell you a little bit about them. If you click on See Alumni, it shows you the over 90,000 alumni um, that have a LinkedIn profile. So here, let's say again that you're interested in public relations. You can search that, and now it's narrowed it down to about 8,700 alumni. It will tell you where they work, um, where they live, and what they do specifically. So let's say that you're interested in working, doing public relations at Tyson Foods. So now, if you scroll all the way down, these are all of the people that are working in public relations or have worked in public relations in the past that also are university alumni, Alum, University of Arkansas alumni and um, currently work at Tyson. So this is a great resource for you to reach out to people um, saying that you're a student of the University of Arkansas and you're interested in doing what they're doing. So say something like, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Um, some of them may not get back to you because it is a busy time at work or maybe they haven't looked at their account in a while, but other people may be very invested in helping you figure out what your next step might be, which is why you should always reach out to a few people, not just one. This is a great way to set up an informational interview where you can ask things like, what do you wish you had known? What are some things that surprised you about the industry? Then if you keep up those contacts, they may become a part of your network. Then anytime they hear about a position, they're more likely to let you know. And then of course, don't forget about your faculty and staff. Oftentimes, not only do they know of opportunities, but they know where previous graduates have gone to work or on to graduate school. So now we will move on to talk about the actual application and follow-up. There's something called the Applicant Tracking System, or ATS. Um, it's a software that reads your resume once you've uploaded it. It reads for keywords and other relevant information and ranks you according to those keywords and how frequently and even when they show up. So you want to tailor your resume and use the job description as a blueprint. They're telling you what they want from this job. So your job is to answer that. So if they mention communication a couple times, then your resume needs to specifically say that you have experience with communication, assuming that's true. You want to use the exact verbiage of the keywords and phrases and use them further up in your resume as the system will assume that they have more re relevance. There used to be this idea that you could hide words by putting them in white in the background and the system would pick them up. The problem is that not only is that not honest and the newer systems can distinguish between the actual resume and what's hidden behind it. You also want to stay away from headers, footers, and text boxes. Some versions cannot read any of these for formats. So you may have the information, but the software can't read it and therefore assumes the information isn't there. On the other hand, newer applicant tracking systems can match your search to your LinkedIn profile, whether you include that in your resume or not. So if you have a LinkedIn profile, you want to make sure it's up to date. Um, and last but not least, make sure you upload in a Word document so the system can read everything. However, if you're emailing, you should always send it in a PDF in case they have an older or newer version of Word than you because it can mess with the format. Next, you want to keep track of where you have applied. This means that every position you apply for, you want to list all of the contact information you have, 
you want to remember the individual job posting number because this can signify the difference between multiple jobs with the same title. You want to also keep track of application dates and all follow-up communication that you have, any usernames or passwords if you've had to set up an account, and any additional relevant information um, based on the application itself. So if it does require a special licensure or it has a flexible start date, any of that information that you may want to know later on. And lastly, you want to make sure that you follow up with an email. Depending on when the application closes will determine when you submit a follow-up email. If there is an actual end date for the posting, then you want to wait three to four days after the job closes. Many times HR managers don't look at applications until after it's closed. Then there are others that stay open until filled, which means they are reviewing as they come in. In this case, you would email three to seven days after you submit your application. The email is not an opportunity to ask why you haven't been called yet, and you shouldn't email more than once unless they've asked, to provide, asked you to provide more information. You do want to verify that you have submitted all application materials. You might also ask about the hiring timeline. Um, it is an opportunity to find out more about their search process. Um, but as far as the actual email itself, the structure is a basic business email. You need an actual salutation, provide a brief summary, of why you are writing, call attention to any attachments if you are also attaching a resume or cover letter, reiterate your interest in the position and thank the reader, and then close and sign the email. The graduate school search is similar in many ways to the job search and follows generally the same steps. First, searching. Before you begin, think about your underlining motivation for going. Why is it that you want to attend? Um, why do you want to do it now? Is it going to be something that gets you closer to your ultimate career goal? When searching for schools, you'll need to know what you are looking for to narrow down the list. What type of degree are you seeking? What location do you want to be in? And what kinds of programs will work best for your lifestyle? And last but not least, look into the financial aid opportunities the schools offer before deciding. They can drastically help reduce the cost and some even provide you with hands-on experience like graduate assistantships and teaching assistantships. Once you are ready to start searching, you should give yourself plenty of times as once you choose schools, you'll have to go through the application process. The Princeton Review, Petersons, and GradSchools.com make looking for schools that offer your specific degree program easy. You can cast a wide net at first to see all of your options, and as you learn more about the schools and what you are looking for, you can begin to narrow down your search and weed out schools. Research is the next step in the grad school search. Once you have narrowed down the list of schools, this is the information you're going to want to consider for each. What about the program appeals to you? Are faculty researching areas that might be interesting to you? Do they offer financial aid that can help cover cost? And of course, interest requirements. This information will not only help you narrow down schools, but will come in very handy when writing application materials and if you were selected for an interview. Step three is the actual applying. Graduate school applications are going to be quite different from what you experienced in undergrad and much more time consuming. Many re universities require two separate applications for the graduate school and department, so make sure you're reading directions carefully. Watch deadlines for every application and make sure you have it in by the earliest one. Listed here are an example of what may be asked of you in your application. It will vary from school to school and program to program, so again, read carefully. What we recommend for all students is to keep track of the schools you're considering applying to or have applied to. This will keep you on track with deadlines and is an easy way to access information about the schools. I also suggest detailing the application materials each school is looking for to ensure you submit all required documents. Some of the other things you may want to note are tuition per credit hours, resident versus non-resident, um, keeping a reminder of application fee costs because it does get expensive the more schools you apply to, and of course, any additional categories of interest, such as research bills, campus visits, and interview dates. So those are the basics of the job and grad school search process. We encourage you to come to our office to meet with a career counselor. You can make an appointment online through Handshake or by calling our office at 479-575-2805. We can assist you with the job and grad school search with information that is a little more tailored or specific to your industry or program. We also do mock interviews, resume reviews, along with graduate application reviews, and many other services. Thank you.